let's talk about the business. The last time we caught up, you talked about growth. You talked about not wanting to miss the boat on copper, wanting to sort of push ahead with some of the other commodities. Where are we with the growth story 2020 at Marden? Morning, guys. Well, I mean, I think the second quarter and the, the third quarter, again, you showed us the headwinds we're pushing against in terms of growth. So. We're pushing ahead with growth. We have $2 billion of projects under construction now in our gold and our phosphate business. Um, but obviously we're in a, a situation now where commodity prices are dropping and continue to do so. We're fully funded for those growth projects. We're on track. What we are looking at though is the longer term growth beyond 2020 uh, and making sure we're focused on the right areas uh, there. And speaking of financing, there's a rights issue that appears to be in the pipeline, there, and You're looking potentially at a cooperation with the PIF. I mean, how big is it going to be and when will it happen? So what we've announced, uh, Yusuf, is a debt for equity exchange. So our rolling company in the aluminium business was over leveraged. So we've basically reached an agreement with the PIF to exchange their loan, which is around $800 million into equity in Madden at the holding company level. So we have a uh, shareholder meeting uh, next Monday, uh, which we are presenting to the shareholders that uh, transaction. If that gets approved, um, that defrecti exchange would occur uh, very shortly thereafter, during the month of November. Darren, what, what does that mean in terms of the rights? I think the story we wrote earlier in the year was that you were possibly looking at a $5 billion rights issue. Can you say now a rights issue would be off the cards in the near term if that debt for equity swap goes through? I mean, if you look at our capital structure, clearly we have, we have too much debt in the company, for, especially for a commodity company. So when we look in the future, the growth beyond those projects I just talked about, we would have to look at other means of raising capital to do those or um, use our equity in, in more imaginative ways to, to achieve some of that growth. But a uh, rights issue at the moment, there's no plan for a rights issue, no. I mean, you mentioned that there's still some work to do. There's too much debt in the company. What about the subsidiaries? Are you looking at some new refinancing plans? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the challenges you have as a, a as a structure like we have. So you have the holding company, but a lot of the debts in the JVs, which are JVs with other companies. So we don't always have exactly the same um, outlook on, on leverage in those JVs. Having said that, the market in Saudi particularly has been very conducive to uh, making refinancings very attractive. So we've done a number of those in the last two years. Uh, we have some more coming up. I think as long as the market stays as good as they are and with obviously interest rates dropping, as they did yesterday, it's a great time to refinance. So we'll be opportunistic, but we have more uh, debt to refinance coming up in 2020, yes. Darren, uh, can I get your perspective? Everybody's having a conversation there about the Aramco IPO. From a global perspective and a global investment perspective, for example, for your company, is that good news? The Aramco IPO brings bigger investor and investment investigation to Saudi companies. Is there a tailwind for you from this IPO if and when it comes? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask me when it comes, so I definitely don't know the answer to that question. Well, you can actually, you know what, Darren, hold on, the, the hold on. You can actually, benefit. Yeah, yeah, do you know when it's going to come? Can you confirm when the IPO is going to come, first of all? Then you can answer the question. Come on, come on. I, I really don't know when it's going to come. <laughs> And even if I did, I wouldn't tell okay, you. Now you but I really don't know. I'm not that important. But you know what? Do you know, it's, it's such, such an important uh, transaction for the kingdom. And I think, you know, for companies like us, it just puts Saudi Arabia more on the map. And I think there's a good story to tell about the stock exchange in Saudi Arabia. It's a very active exchange, the biggest in the region. Uh, I don't think it's properly covered globally. I think it could become a very useful source of capital for companies outside of Saudi Arabia. I know the listing rules have changed. So for us, I think it just, it just puts Saudi Arabia on the map as an area where a stock market actually exists, is, is functioning, there's a good investor base. I think it can only be positive for us. Darren, how keen are you to push any additional acquisitions? Have you identified any targets? Do you have a preference for geographies or any particular commodity? Well, you know, there's always targets out there. I think the, the trick is to be disciplined. Um, I think there are more targets now. You know, as we go through a commodity down cycle, one of the big advantages Madden has is we have a, 
a really long-term perspective in our investor base, particularly through the PIF. So it's pretty difficult most, for most companies to start investing in a downturn. I think we actually could be one of the few that will be able to do so. But you have to be disciplined. Uh, we're not trying to call the bottom, but just to be disciplined in what, how we make those investment decisions. The two areas we're looking at, which we've been consistently talking about, is one is in uh, fertilizer. We need to complement our existing business. We're the third largest exporter of phosphate fertilizer globally now. That will become number two in the next five years. We need to have distribution channels globally to make sure that product gets to market efficiently. And the second is in copper in particular, and maybe in gold, this is often associated. Copper is a great metal for the future. Uh, we're not alone in thinking that, so we're looking at a number of opportunities in copper as well uh, globally.